guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm Stephanie with Jambalaya Resell, and today I'm going to be doing a what sold video with you. So I'm going to be showing you everything that sold for me last week, which would be the week of April the 11th through April the 17th. I sell on eBay, Mercari, Poshmark, Kitizen, Etsy in Facebook Marketplace. I think that's where I sell. It gets to be a lot. Um, and so I had sales on most of those platforms last week. I did not sell anything on Facebook, but I think I had a sale, at least one sale on all the others. So um, it was a really good sales week and I'm excited to show you what sold. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, so my first sell from last week was this Lily Pulitzer dress, and this is the first article of Lily Pulitzer clothing I've ever sold. It's not something that I run into a lot in my area. I actually found this dress in the kids section at my Goodwill store, um, probably because it's a size zero, so it was very tiny, and they had it in the kids section. And this is one of the items that I sent to thread up when I was still sending things to them regularly. It didn't sell there, and and so I did reclaim it and it sold for me on Poshmark for $30. So at my Goodwill, since they thought it was kids clothing, I paid the kids clothing price, which would have been around $3. And that gave me a profit of $20.50. On eBay, I sold these Columbia PFG shorts. These came from the Goodwill outlet. So I average out my cost of goods when I'm at the outlet. Um, obviously, these probably weighed less than a pound. And so I didn't pay the full $1.49 for them. But then I also had items when I shopped there that weighed more than a pound. So I just average everything out and assume I paid a dollar per item. Um, and so if that was my cost of goods, that means I made a profit of $5.43. This baby doll came in a lot that I purchased on shopgoodwill.com. Periodically, I like to go on there and look for lots. And it is more competitive than going into the store because there are more eyes on the items. And to me, it's harder to get a good deal. But you just kind of have to look on there for things that other people are missing. So they had this lot of dolls from the 90s. And their picture wasn't very good of the overall lot. So there was um, a PJ Sparkles doll that was very tiny and not photographed very well. And I bought the lot based on her. And I made all my money back just selling her. She sold within like a couple of days of being listed. I made all my money back from her. And so then all the rest of the dolls are just pure profit, which is awesome. So this is a baby all gone doll, but I don't really understand why because she doesn't have any mechanism to eat anything. Maybe the bottle kind of, it looks like it empties if you have the bottle that goes to her. I'm not sure why. Anyway, she sold for $18.74 free shipping. I didn't have anything into her because like I said, I'm in the profit zone on that lot now. So I made $10.52 from this doll. My hair is all in the way today, y'all. All right. Let's see. So this was a brand I had never heard of before. It's Universal Standard. This came in a men's thread up rescue box and I did the unboxing and uploaded it. And um, in the video, as I was unboxing, I said, I don't know this brand. And someone commented down below and said, um, Universal Standard is an influencer brand. And because they said that, I was able to then go and find this item. It's actually a women's item and um, it retails for around $75 or $80, I want to say. So Universal Standard is a Bolo brand. If you're like I was and have never heard of it, be on the lookout for that. Um, this sold within minutes of my listing it. So I probably could have asked for a little bit more, but I like a quick flip. So um, Oh, and obviously it retails for $89 right there. So anyway, this sold for $35. I'm in the profit on that entire box. So this was pure profit of $28. 
Flax is a Bolo brand. However, um, I believe this is the first piece of flax that I've ever actually sold. It is something like Lily Pulitzer. I don't run into a lot of around here. I do have another flax piece that I've been sitting on for a while and it just has not sold. So I wasn't very hopeful of this piece, honestly, but um, I did pay up for it. We have a local thrift store and all of the proceeds go to a really wonderful cause. And I just enjoy that thrift store. They have better brands in there, but it is slightly more expensive. So um, I paid $8 for this tunic. It sold for $20 and that gave me an $8 profit. So I basically just doubled my investment, but it was a quick double. This also sold, it sold at like the same time as that Universal Standard shirt, like back to back sales. And I had just listed it that day. So this was a good sale for me. Even though it wasn't the most profitable, it was fast. All right, I sold a bundle and it included this Mom and Ain't Easy shirt that came in a lot I purchased off Facebook where I purchased, um, I think I paid $40 and filled up the back of my car with the makings of a garage sale, but the lady didn't want to have a garage sale. So this shirt was in there. This came from Goodwill, so I had $2 into it, and I just really like the play on friends on this shirt, and I knew someone else would too. And I picked up these loft chambray shorts from a garage sale, and I paid $2 for those. Do not pick up all loft pieces, but if it is a good piece, like chambray is in, you know shorts are going to sell when the weather is, you know, right for that. So this is like a good standard piece right there. Um, and if the price is right, then I will purchase loft items for resale. So anyway, the bundle deal was $28 for those three pieces. I basically only had $4 into the lot and that gave me a profit of $18.40. This, um, set of pajamas. It's Miss Elaine brand. I picked this up at the bins. I will pick up pajamas and bras at the bins all day long and I don't have to fight anybody for it because the people at the bins generally aren't looking for the same thing I'm looking for and so I never really elbow people or run to get first dibs on the bins. I just wait till everybody's finished looking and then I still find plenty of good things to sell. So Miss Elaine is a decent pajama brand to look out for. People know the brand. I've sold a couple of Miss Elaine pieces. Um, doesn't sell for you know crazy money but it is a good staple brand. So this sold for $16. I had a dollar into the set and I made $11.80. All right, I am not a vintage expert at all and vintage scares me because I don't know what I'm doing with vintage. So Thrifting is My Beach is a um, YouTube channel that I watch. She's excellent. She is so good with her vintage brands. And I had recently watched one of her videos when I ran across these at the bins. And they are just, they are high waist mom jeans. They were embroidered with all these tiny little, I guess it's like tiny little flowers. Just a great pair of vintage jeans. And so since I had watched that video, and it was the bin, so I was really only going to be in it for a dollar. I went ahead and purchased these. Now, I did sit on them for a couple of months, but they did sell for $35, which was my full asking price on Poshmark, and they gave me a profit of $27. Um, these were three books on CD. Now, Books on CD, I mean, people basically just do their audio books on their phone now, but there are people who still want audio books on CD and will buy them. So I picked these up at an estate sale for basically a dollar a piece, and I just went ahead and lotted them up because individually they weren't anything special and they just weren't going to sell for that much. But I figured, you know, these all came from one estate sale, so... Whoever liked all these books, there's probably a buyer out there who also likes all of these books or all of these authors. So I just lotted them right on up and they sold for $15. They shipped media mail, which was not expensive at all. And I, 
I made a profit of six dollars and seven cents. This was a mistake. <laughs> so I went to visit my uncle and we hit up a couple of thrift stores while I was there. At his thrift store, there were two sets of cabbage patch clothing and it's new old stock. So in the package, they don't make it anymore though. So I picked both of them up. They were $6 a piece and I looked up the comps so I knew they weren't going to sell for a ton. This one was not in as good of condition as the other one because the package was open down here and I disclosed that in my description. The package was open and dirt or sand had gotten up into the package. Okay, so it's new but the seal was broken and there were there was dirt so it was flawed. So I knew I wasn't going to get as much for this, but I had it listed on eBay and I cross posted it over to Mercari and I do free shipping on all my platforms, but I just didn't take into account how much shipping this item was going to be because it was big, like the, the package was big. And there wasn't necessarily a good box for it. So I did end up having to cut down a box a good deal just so I wouldn't overpay in shipping because I was already like at, at my limit of breaking even. So by the time I spent all this time breaking down a box and trying to make a custom box basically for this piece, um, it sold for $24. I had $6 in it and shipping was $14.10 because I'm in Louisiana and it was shipping, I don't remember, somewhere up north. Um, and so I made a whopping total of 50 cents on this item. Don't be like me. Figure out your shipping and don't just assume you can ship it on the cheap. Like figure it out first. Uh, these came in that same bundle lot that I picked up, um, that Mom and Ain't Easy shirt. So same bundle lot already in the profit on it. So zero dollars into these. They sold for twelve dollars and I made a nine dollar and five cent profit. The brand is X Appeal, which I had never heard of before, but there are plenty of X Appeal brand clothing items on Poshmark. So apparently other people have heard of it. This vintage visor was in horrible condition, but it still sold and I knew it would still sell because this is an amazing graphic right here. I don't know what Stroh's, okay, it's a San Diego brewed beer. So I guess I do know what that is because I looked it up um, <laughs> and I forgot. So anyway, I had purchased a lot of hats um, or ball caps or whatever from um, a garage sale back in August and I ended up paying roughly 25 cents per hat. Some were in good condition and some just were not. This one was not. The padding was dry rotted and coming out. I did disclose that but people who really want this it's you know if you're a little bit crafty it's easy enough to cut in the back use a vacuum to get all the dry rot out and then put your own new piece of foam in there. So this, even with all the damage, sold for $15 and I made a profit of $10.11. This Elton John tee came from Goodwill. It's nothing special. It is not vintage or anything, um, but people like Elton John. So, and the graphics were really cool on it, I thought. So this sold for $15. I had $2 in it and I made $7.19. This hat came in the same lot as that vintage beer hat did. I don't know what Schwing is, but it has like a picture of some sort of heavy equipment here. Um, so I think it was some sort of a construction company maybe. Correct me down below if you know what it is and I'm completely wrong. But this sold for $8. Like I said, I had a quarter into it, so I made a profit of $4.80. Treasure Island Pillow Fort um, Curtain. If you watched last week's what sold, you know I sold one already last week. These came from um, our Amazon Target return store called Best Deals. And so I picked this up on $4 day. I paid $4 for the panel. It sold for $30 and that gave me a $20 profit. 
Popples. So this Popples was at a garage sale. Um, it was super crowded at the garage sale and they just had toys just kind of strewn and they had new toys um, and they had two kids. And so I picked up a couple of newer toys and when I passed back through, I just saw this Popples sitting there and overlooked it and I snatched it up very fast because I could tell it was a vintage one. And so I guess it had originally belonged to the mom and then the daughter got to play with it and grew out of it so they decided to sell it anyway i only had a dollar into this popples if you ever see a popples um a vintage one then you need to snatch it up because they are a bolo um this one was in really good condition i mean the fur was a bit matted if you don't know what a popples is they're from the 80s and they fold into themselves like this they have a pocket just go into there so they'll have an old tag like this is how you'll know it's a vintage one they did relaunch them i think like around 2000 so anyway this one's from 1988 it sold um, at a best offer of 29.99 and i made a profit of 16 dollars and 95 cents Vintage Glowworms are also a bolo item. This one was in great condition. Now, I had a vintage glowworm, and when I was helping my mom to move, I actually tossed it, but it had battery acid bleed all on the fabric, so I really don't think it would have sold anyway. But this one is a pink one, and it lit up, as you can see in the picture, when I was squeezing it, and it is the old school 1988 one. So I had it listed at $39.95, and I sent out a best offer or accepted a best offer of $29.99. This glow worm was in the lot of dolls that I mentioned before, um, the same as that baby all gone. So already recouped my money from the lot, $0 cost of goods, and I made $16.95 from this. This Lane Bryant tank was about to be pulled from my inventory because I've had it for over a year and someone purchased it and saved it from having to go to consignment. So it sold for $13. I had originally picked it up from the Goodwill outlet, so I had a dollar into it and that gave me a profit of $9.05. All right, here's the second set of Cabbage Patch clothing that I purchased when I went to visit my uncle. I did a little bit better on this one. So this one did not have any breaks in the seal and did not have any dirt in it. So I was able to list it slightly higher. Someone sent me an offer on it. And before I accepted the offer, I messaged and said, what state do you live in before I accept your offer? And they said, Georgia. And like I said, I'm in Louisiana, so I knew shipping would not be as high, and it was not. It was not quite half um, before my shipping was a little over $14, and to ship the similar item to Georgia was $8.72. So it did make a difference, and on this one, I was able to profit $12.85. This is a bolo. I've never seen a Starbucks cooler before. I know people love the Starbucks mugs and cups and tumblers and all of that, but I've never seen a cooler. And I found this at the Google outlet, just sitting amongst the backpacks and it was in great condition. So I brought it home and I really couldn't find any comps on this exact one. I did find some other soft ice chest or cooler bags or whatever, but none exactly like this. So I went ahead and listed this at $50 free shipping and it sat for a little while, um, really only about a month though. And then it sold for full asking price of $50 and that gave me a profit of $33.08. I had one sale on Kittizen and it was a bundle sale. So they bundled this um, Thomas and Friends. This is Caitlin and her two coaches that she pulls. And this is, I can't see around my camera. This is Merlin and the uh, Caboose car that he pulls. And so they're both Trackmaster. Um, my husband and I had gone on a thrifting road trip. 
to just to Texas, not very far. And I had purchased a very large storage tote full of track master track and trains. These came out of there. So the person on Kitizen bundled these together. I sent them an offer of $40 and they accepted. I had roughly $2 into this and I made $24.36. This cute little vintage raccoon love bandit, I thought he would sell for Valentine's Day, and he didn't. And then he just randomly sold one day last week, so I was really surprised. I only paid a dollar for him, and he sold for me on Etsy for $19.67, and that gave me a profit of $13.52. On Mercari, I saw this Monsters, Inc. Sully. He talks. So Monsters, Inc. plush are a great thing to be on the lookout for. Some of the characters, not Sully or Mike, I mean, they do sell decent. But if you can get any of the supporting char characters from Monsters, Inc. or Monsters University, they sell really well. I was actually just looking at comps for them the other day, and I was shocked at how much, like, Randall goes for. So... Anyway, especially if you can get them and they talk. Someone sent me a message on Mercari and he wanted to just double check that the voice box worked on this item because his daughter had the exact same one. The dog got a hold of it. The voice didn't work anymore. And so I went out and double tested it for him and it was in perfect working condition. So he purchased this for $20 free shipping. I had paid a dollar for it at Goodwill and that gave me a profit of $10.31. These dockers came in my Thread Up Men's Rescue Box, so they sold for $15, and that gave me a profit of $5.13. These panties came in a Bulk.com underwear lot that I purchased last July. I've already made profit from that box, even though it's we're coming up on a year um, there's only a few items left from that box and they just slowly sell off and I'm good with that. So someone sent me an offer of $15 for these. I accepted and that gave me a profit of $9.37. One more item that was in that doll lot from Shop Goodwill was this 1989 Magic Nursery doll in her original clothes. If she were not in her original clothes, she would not have really sold for anything because she's in bad condition. Her um, feet and arms and all were very stained up. And if I had been thinking, then this might have been a good item to actually separate from her clothes because shipping the clothes would not have been as expensive and the purchaser may have only wanted the clothing. I don't know because I didn't ask. It was a global shipping order. So this sold for $15 and I made a profit of $7.27. This was a great sale and this was all because of my husband because I didn't want to fool with this to be honest. He was with me at the Best Deal store which I told you is the Amazon Target return store and he was going to pick it up for me and he decided to real quick just see how much it sells for regularly and he saw these were selling great on eBay. So um, he brought it to me and asked if I wanted to do it and I was really kind of hesitant because beauty stuff, um, health and beauty isn't my favorite category to deal with and then I don't like having to deal with if these leak and they're heavy to ship and you know just all sorts of things and you have to be careful that you check the expiration date but these didn't expire till 2022 so we picked up some for me to have for the summer and we decided to go ahead and pick up four to lot up and sell and sure enough within 24 hours um, I had them listed at 60 so within 24 hours I got this best offer of $55 and um, I had paid $2 per bottle for these. That gave me a profit of $24.33. This also came from that Best Deal store. I purchased this on $4 day and it sold for $17 on Mercari, giving me a profit of $4.52. This Legend of Zelda t-shirt came from the Goodwill outlet. It really um, is just Legend of Zelda brand. It might have been a Loot Crate. I don't think it was Loot Crate because that says Loot Crate on the inside usually. So 
Anyway, it came from the bins. I had a dollar into it. I liked the graphic on the front, and Zelda is a very popular game. So it sold for um, $12, free shipping, and I made $5.72. This Dale Earnhardt shirt also came from the Goodwill outlet. This was a vintage tee, and it was really nice because it had graphics on both sides. So that's something you want to look for and let people know because people like that. And it was really clean. So this sold for a best offer of $22. I had a dollar into it and I profited $13.80. These Old Navy jeans, I will say it again. People turn their nose up at Old Navy, but people like Old Navy. It's very popular. There's a reason they have Old Navies absolutely everywhere because they have great sales. People know what style they wear at Old Navy. They know what size they wear at Old Navy. And it is an easy sell, especially if you can get it new with tags. So these came from the Goodwill outlet. I paid a dollar for them. Someone purchased these at full asking price of $25 on Poshmark. And that gave me a profit of $19. Don't sleep on Old Navy. Speaking of Old Navy, these were my son's uniform shorts and he outgrew them. So I just put them all together. They were listed at $20 and not moving. So I dropped it to $15 and they sold right away, giving me a profit of $12. This Hearth and Hand Magnolia um, shower curtain also came from the Goodwill outlet not the Goodwill outlet, the best deal store. So I picked this up on $4 day and it sold for $15, which gave me an $8 profit. I'm sure most of you know that Hearth and Hand, which is Joanna Gaines and Magnolia Home brand, sells extremely well. People are on the hunt for it and I almost always find it at that best deal store. This Tasso Ella Island shirt came in the Thread Up Men's Rescue Box. It was new with tags. Not necessarily a brand that I would just pick up out in the wild, but as this was new with tags, it ended up being a good sell for me. So it sold for $20 and that gave me a profit of $15. This Unique Low shirt also came from the Thread Up Men's Rescue Box. It was once again a brand I had never heard of. My friend Amanda Pruitt, if you're not already subscribed to her YouTube channel, go subscribe to her because I learned a lot from her, especially on kids brands. Anyway, she commented on my YouTube video and told me that it's a brand, um, that they have unique low stores down at Disney Springs. And um, so it's just, you know, chain store. And anyway, this ended up selling for $10 and that gave me a profit of $7.05. These Converse sold on Poshmark and then the person canceled the sale after I already had it boxed up and I was a little bit mad, but I just left them boxed up and then someone ended up liking them on Friday, which was closet clear out day. So I sent my closet clear out message to them. They were listed for 30. So I sent my closet clear out message saying, hey, I saw you like this item. Would you be interested in this item if I dropped it to $25 and you got discounted shipping? They said, yes, I dropped it. They purchased it. So they were already boxed up and ready to go since the other person backed out. Um, they came from the Goodwill outlet. I had a dollar into them. They ended up selling for 25 and I made $17.50. This guy came in a lot of small toys I purchased from the Goodwill outlet. If you did not see that video, it is my previous video before this one. And I show you all the things that came in that box, which was a semi-mystery box. Um, it's a lot of small toys. And, you know, I think that it didn't sell because it was small toys. But there is value even in McDonald toys. Certain characters people want to buy. So this is from the B-Movie. And he sold for $8.95 free shipping. And he gave me $4.49 towards recouping my money from that lot. 
And my last sale of the week also came from the small toy lot. These were my little pony figures. I had 17 of them and lotted them all up. They sold for $19.95, which gave me $13.42. All right, so last week I had a total of 38 sales, and that resulted in a net profit. And when I say net, that means um, how much I'm actually getting after cost of goods, fees, and shipping, but before I pay taxes on that amount. So a net profit of $499.80. So just 20 cents away from a $500 profit week. So last week was a super great week. If you've been watching, you would have seen that um, for the month of April, my sales have been just slightly behind what I like them to be. And last week more than made up for it. So I'm actually slightly ahead of what my goal for a month is right now thanks to last week. So I am excited to continue the month of April and see how much net profit I can end the month with. I like to make enough to pay my mortgage every single month and then, you know, anything extra I have from that is super awesome. Uh, this is a part-time job for me just to put that into perspective for you. So Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up down below. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and go ahead and hit the little bell. And that way you will be notified every time I post a new video so you can be one of the first ones to watch it. I usually post at least two a week and we can be YouTube buddies. So once again, thanks for watching. I hope you have a fabulous week and I will see you next time. Bye.